everyone, I'm Scott from the old Curiosity Shop, welcoming you back to another Kitchen Counter Thrift Haul. Now, this thrift haul is beautifully all over the place. It's quite a diverse collection of items, but I think you'll enjoy them. Let's see what's what. Look at this fantastic mid-century ashtray. It's not going to make me start smoking, but man, wouldn't I love to have a kidney-shaped coffee table with this... Uh, sort of organic, what do you say, um, is it amoebic, amoeba? I don't know, I don't know the jargon of the mid-century, but I don't know what this looks like on the video. And everybody's TVs has have different color uh, levels and adjustments, but it's that classic sort of 50s turquoise-ish and black. And it's a pottery ashtray, completely unmarked, no clue who made it. That's looks like a horrible crack. It's a pretty solid stress crack on the underneath, which doesn't really seem to affect the soundness of this thing. Uh, it does have one repair, which I think whoever repaired it did a pretty good job. And it looks like at one point there was a little nick right there and someone uh, filled it in with something black and put some shoe polish and nail polish over it or something. But anyway, all right, mid-century folks, I really like that. Little hobnail piece by Fenton in blue opalescent. Okay. And then by Payton City, I'm almost certain this is a Payton City piece. Um, there were a few companies who did this decal work. Now, this is a, an applied decal. It's not hand painted on there. It holds up fairly well as long as you don't murder it with an SOS pad. And the edges are gilded and this piece is uranium glass and it dates to right around 1930, late 20s into the 30s. That little thing right there, you know when a uh, stone hits your windshield and you get that sort of uh, a kind of a star crack? You can't feel it. That's not focusing try to get it to focus. Um, it's there. Uh, doesn't really seem to be a chip, but something banged into that and left that little mark on there. So, But people like uranium glass and someone might want to collect that just for the oddity of it. Uh, Payton City. And then of course Imperial Candlewick. I sold the vase and now here are the two and all the other pieces. This is all that I have left in the candle wick, so if you uh, like the little candle holder, candlestick holders, there they are. Candle wick made for a very long time and this was to Imperial what American was to uh, Falstoria, I guess, and maybe what uh, Riviera and uh, to Homer Lachlan was. And what, what was the companion to Riviera? Good grief. Fiesta wear. This was a money maker for Imperial and they sold it for many many decades. Speaking of money makers it was 
the Hobnail Fenton line, which I believe Fenton, Fenton was hard hit by the depression as all the glass companies were. And they struggled and struggled to stay open. And when they introduced their Hobnail line sometime in the 1940s, boy, it really pulled them out of dire straits, financial straits, and really helped that company to uh, bounce back. So here's a beautiful, I think it's a 10 inch uh, opalescent hobnail bowl uh, by the Fenton Art Glass Company. Back there is a beautiful art glass vase and it is signed on the bottom, Terry. There is a modern artist named Terry, oh for Pete's sake, uh, cr uh, Critter, Critter, C-R-I-D-E-R. But his signature doesn't look like that. I'll let you see the signature. So if anybody looks up Terry, you're going to see Terry Critter. As I said, C-R-I-D-E-R. -E and he makes glass. I think he and his wife make glass. And some of it looks a lot like this. But I can't attribute this to that particular artist because the signature doesn't match. So who knows? It is numbered on the bottom. It has a rough pontal. This would be a piece of contemporary glass. I know I say I don't buy contemporary things and very rarely will I buy anything that is new, but that caught my eye as a beautiful piece of art glass. This is all applied, uh, random threading. And of course I'm getting my fingerprints all over it. But I don't know how well you can see there. There, isn't that beautiful? Look at that, oh, stick a light bulb in it. That's just a really nice contemporary art glass base. This one back here is uh, Pilgrim Glass, which I guess is not in existence anymore. It's a ribbed optic cranberry with a very delicate fluted top. And we can see um, that's typical of the cranberry, the typical of um, the cranberry glass made by the Pilgrim Glass Company. And it's not signed, some of the later pieces were signed, the earlier pieces had uh, labels attached to them with a string, and of course a lot of the labels are long gone. But a really pretty optic, a ribbed optic piece of uh, cranberry glass there, which we can't see very well back there. This reminds me of a musical note, in a sense. And it's a very pearlescent, opalescent, mid-century vase with 24 karat gold, and it's made in Pennsylvania by a company you might not have heard of, Holly Ross. Mm-hmm. Uh, made in Lana, PA, makers of distinguished China. I should have a long sleeve white shirt on since I'm handling distinguished China. We'll put it back very carefully. Nice little mid-century piece. Hello, my little mid-century friend. Now, mid-century, but a little bit earlier, and not really mid-century modern, the Cabot Shaw Company had this pattern called Strawberry. A lot of people call it Strawberry Shortcake. Oh, I had about 80 pieces of it a few years ago and sold it all at a show. It's still popular today. This is a covered vegetable serving bowl, beautifully clean on the inside and out. I normally don't buy single odd pieces of patterns because I'm trying not to become replacements but even if a person doesn't collect the strawberry by uh, W.S. George this is a piece that someone might like just because it says summertime wouldn't you like to scoop some fresh strawberries out of that to put over your biscuit I have a funny story to tell about that uh, Cabot Shaw, uh, Division, uh, W.S. George, okay, we can see. And the strawberries are just sort of randomly all over it. So here's my story, and everybody, <laughs> I'll try to make it fast. A good friend of mine, uh, one of my best friends I've known for 40, well, 30-some years, uh, born and raised in North Carolina, uh, we, he, he came up here to visit several times and we went out to a diner of course in Jersey we go to diners all the time and we ordered strawberry shortcake he took one bite and went Ugh, what is wrong with this it's nasty 
And of course, people eat strawberry shortcake in very different ways, but the tradition here in, in the North is that the strawberries are served on an unsweetened, just plain old, uh, sort of a bisquick biscuit. And we usually pour milk over it. And he was accustomed to those little sugary cakes, I guess. Uh, being from the land of sweet tea uh, <laughs> and peach cobbler and whatnot, uh, he was not accustomed to biting into sort of very uh, unsweetened, uh, sort of cakey, if you will, bisquick biscuits. But that's how we eat strawberry shortcake in my neck of the woods. <laughs> how about you guys around the country? What do you prefer? The sweet sort of uh, angel food cake, almost like, you know, like a Twinkie would be? Or do you like the unsweetened Bisquick biscuit? That's how I like it. Here's a straw, um, hmm. <laughs> a syrup pitcher. Got all excited there with a the strawberry shortcake. And this one sort of has an Art Deco, very 30s, 40s flair to it. Uh, it's not... Bakelite on the top, but an early plastic, and I love the color of the green, very streamlined, very 1930s. Even the embossed lines on here are very deco, and of course, works beautifully. And we expect to see the HA for Hazel Atlas, and there it is. I don't know, but maybe 70 or 80% of all glass containers are made by Hazel Atlas. Here's the AH Leatherman. You're not supposed to see those over there. So quit looking at those, I'll tell you about those later. Uh, this is the A and M, I can't see it, A and H uh, leather lines. The full description is, in, is on my auction page. Uh, ink holder, okay, there we go. And it sort of has a bronzy look to it. It's not bronze, it's just some type of regular old pot metal most likely but it has a nice look it's probably 1940s could even be be 50s it's not quite as old as it might look it's definitely not victorian but it would be a nice piece for a traditional desk this very art deco looking cat back here is a little bit of a mystery um it is signed down here, DeWitt, okay? So I looked that up and I found out who the artist was and he made these in the 1960s. And everybody that lists these says original 1960s bronze on wood. Well, this is not bronze on wood. This is some kind of a composite. Um, I don't know if it's a resin or not, but it's something synthetic. This has either a ceramic interior or a pottery interior, and this patina has been put on it. Now, I am not getting the impression that this was dipped in bronze, so I think these were reproduced somewhere along the line, and they, but they had the DeWitt signature. Uh, he's so Art Deco looking and so regal, whether he's an old one or a new one, uh, I'm going to leave that up to the buyer to decide. I did describe it as accurately as I could, but he's in really good shape. Very heavy, could be used as a bookend or a doorstop if you want. Of course, as you know, the ones that have the most value are orchids of Hawaii, Japan, not the newer ones made in China. The little tiki mugs, they always do well. They sell for 10 or $12. And here we have the in the box little mixer set. It's not a mixer set, it's a salt and pepper shaker. And this is that classic uh, mixer that's uh, Mixmaster. It's on the postage stamp, talked about that before. Uh, I like the one in cream and green, the one from the 30s. This is the later model as we got into the 50s. That cream and green was no longer the popular color, and black and white was popular for kitchens. These are the salt and pepper shakers. They do slide off of there. I will not do that now. They're tiny. They do have corks. And the box says you can use this bowl as a sugar bowl. So that's just really cute. There's the original box, which I will let you see. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
So very nice for salt and pepper shaker collectors or just, hey, if you have sort of a late 40s, early 50s kitchen, it's a great conversation piece. And then finally up for sale, I've got a couple people who are waiting for me to put this up, is a wonderful tea caddy, which I cannot tell if it is English or American. Uh, if it's English, it would be Georgian. If it's American, it would be federal. I really don't know. But it certainly dates to the first half of the 19th century, 1800 to 19... Uh, to 1850. Probably somewhere in the 1830s. A wonderful original brass on the top. Beautiful inlay. Now there's damage on this, so we're talking about either leave it Hey, I would leave it just as it is. It tells a story. Uh, cosmetically, it can be used just like that. Or if you wanted, you could get it, someone to do some restoration work. The little pieces here that are missing. You get it in the light a little bit better of the trim, which doesn't bother me terribly. And we see beautiful inlay work. This is mahogany with looks like some rosewood inlay and some other inlay. Probably the original felt on the bottom. The key works. I would doubt that it's an original key, but it certainly uh, is one that works in this lock mechanism. So yeah, uh, tea caddy in the days when we locked up tea because it was expensive and you didn't want your servants dipping into your Lipton. Uh, there we go. Now what would be in the center here would be a uh, would be a jar, which of course is gone. And then uh, we only have one of the tops. But there's an original handle on the top of it, which is either ivory or bone. Mm-hmm. So this, again, if you get yourself an old piece of wood, and somebody who knows what they're doing, they could replicate this, so you'd have one on each side. There are things you could do to jazz this up. I would use it just like it is. Look at the paper on the inside of that lid. And as I said, the lock mechanism... Of course, you can't... There we go. I don't know if you can see that. Works beautifully. And the box does lock. Alright, I could take this lock mechanism off and see if there's a hallmark on it anywhere. But I'm going to guess that this is American because I did buy it in the Philadelphia area and as you know there are a ton of old Philadelphia estates and this is something that uh, any uh, well-to-do person in the 18th century, I'm sorry, in the uh, early part of the 19th century would have had a tea caddy so I have it very reasonably, I think I have it very reasonably priced at $49. Now it's up for auction and that would be the opening bid. Uh, in really good condition, these are hundreds of dollars, of course not as valuable as they were 15 years ago, I always say that. But if you like the look of this, it's a good, good opportunity to find one. And it's clean and uh, ready to go. So I will back up and... Uh, not that, but those, okay. Well, I'll tell you what. Stay tuned, I'm gonna tag on the very end of this video the discovery of these just this morning in a Goodwill, so you're gonna find out what they are, how much I paid for them, and whether I was excited or not to get them. Everything you see here is up for sale in the old Curiosity Shop. Thanks for watching, everyone. The link to the shop is in the description box below. I'm Scott saying thanks for watching and so long for now. Wow, everybody, look at this. It's a great find. This is a pattern I don't see very often. It's called Old English, and it's by the Indiana Glass Company. Uh, they're very thick, hardy tumblers. It's not thin, elegant depression glass, but it's definitely a depression glass pattern. And I don't remember. It's either late 20s into the early 30s. Um, but there's a set of four of these footed tumblers and they're five dollars and 49 cents that is a great price uh, they appear to be chip free with no dishwasher damage 
So, oh my goodness, this is absolute, absolutely a must. That's fantastic. I've never found these before. And that's actually a pattern that I like, <laughs> made by Indiana Glass. All right. Well, you know, I couldn't wait to get them home. There they are. And they are in absolutely perfect condition. Not a chip or a crack. Mm, haven't been murdered in a dishwasher. Wonderful. It's uranium glass. Of course it's going to glow under a black light. And there they are. Indiana glass uh, little footed tumblers. And uh, that's a late 20s, early 30s depression glass pattern that you don't often see. And that was a great find. What did I pay? Five dollars? 50 cents something like that uh, thrilling okay 